À, rất vui gặp lại quý vị trong chương trình Khẩn Cảnh FBNC về đề tài kinh tế Việt Nam năm 2014. Thưa quý vị, chúng ta đã có cuộc trao đổi với ông Tarek Mumut, tổng giám đốc của ngân hàng ANZ Việt Nam. Ông Tarek cũng là nguyên là chủ tịch của nhóm các ngân hàng nước ngoài tại Việt Nam. Mr. Tarek, we learned that you also are current or the former mm. of the chairman of the International Banker Club in Vietnam. Correct. And your club own uh, have a very fruitful meeting with our prime minister. Mm. Uh, in the meeting, what the most important matter your banker raised to our government? Yeah, so it was actually with the Prime Minister, Governor, the Deputy Governors and, and other banks and it was a good forum and I was speaking on behalf of the, the Banking Working Group which is all the international banks that in Vietnam that are part of our forum. And we made three strong recommendations to the government on what should happen in the year ahead. One was in the area of governance, of the transparency of banks and risk management making sure that the state bank continues to issue new guidelines to keep upgrading uh, the quality of governance in the banking system and transparency in the banking system. And there's clear international standards called Basel II, which Vietnam's intending to implement by 2015. So we really encourage that that process goes through by 2015. The second uh, recommendation we made was with regards to the asset management company. As you know, the asset management company is very active in taking over the bad debts from many banks mm -hmm. and over the next 12 months they expect to take in dollars about eight to nine billion dollars worth of bad debts out of the bank's balance sheet into into the asset management company mm -hmm. and what our encouragement was to make sure that asset management company is very clear very mm -hmm. transparent mm -hmm. in what assets it has and what is the process around tax around legal to dispose or sell those assets or transfer those assets mm -hmm. to make sure for the all the, the, the economy as well as for the investors but it's very clear what the process is. Because mm -hmm. I think the process has started with the asset management company, but the next steps are very important. We also encourage that the asset management company should not sell the assets very quickly. Because if you rush it, you don't get the best price for, mm -hmm. for Vietnam's economy. Mm -hmm. The third recommendation, which is probably the most critical, is there's been a lot of work now done on NPL uh, Circular 2 coming in June 2014. But the challenge now we can see in the next two or three years is capital. The banking system, in Vietnam won't have enough capital to support growth in the future because they need to take provision on all the bad loans that have happened mm -hmm. before and they need to amortize the bond every year. Mm -hmm. And I think the question on capital, if I was the CEO of a local bank, what are my options? What can I do to raise capital? I can either try and find capital locally in Vietnam, but what if I get, want to attract a foreign investor? Mm -hmm. It could be a bank, it could be a fund manager, it could be private equity. It could be a number of different sources, mm -hmm. but at the moment the rules about what is, what is, uh, you know, what is allowed and what's not allowed mm -hmm. seem to be more on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. And I think this, the situation will move a lot faster mm -hmm. if um, clear rules are set on what, as a local CEO, am I allowed to, to, mm -hmm. to consider uh, when it comes to raising capital, because that will have to happen in the next two or three years. Mm -hmm. about the restructuring of the bank that, uh, of course, we need the capital, we need the asset management chain, mm -hmm. but how about the human resources? Mm -hmm. Someone told me, why not local bank in Vietnam? They can hire the CEO, foreign CEO, to run the bank. Mm -hmm. Is it, you think it's a good resolution? It's possible. I mean, I don't, for me, my perspective is I don't really look at between local or foreign. And you, I think it's really important you find the right CEO for, for that kind of role. Now, there's been examples in, in two banks that I'm aware of where the, fo where the foreigner was a CEO or is a CEO. Mm -hmm. So it does happen. But also, is the CEO really got the right level of um, power, right level of authority, uh, able to work in this economy? Mm -hmm. So you really have to find the right um, type of CEO for any job. And whether it's foreign or local, I don't think matters as much as the character and what type of leadership mm -hmm. is brought by that CEO. Also another uh, area that the SOE reform, mm. people also raise a question that we need a very good CEO to mm. run the SOE, mm. just not only change the restructure. Correct, yeah. How yeah. about your view? I think it's a journey. I think if you look at the history, you can understand why things are the way they are. So where it's really government employees being moved around to do different jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you can see why that happens. But you've also seen that that can change. Even if you look at some countries, the head of the state bank or the central bank is a foreigner. Even if you look in, in the Middle East or if you look in Europe, even in England today, actually, it's a Canadian is now the head of the Bank of England. Mm -hmm. So it can happen. I think the most important thing is finding the right person mm -hmm. for that job, mm -hmm. for that time.
because maybe after three years you need a different type of person. Mm -hmm. you know, but I think yeah. it's important you keep an open mind mm -hmm. on what, you, what mm -hmm. kind of talent you need mm -hmm. to attract. Yeah, we, we just see how about the world economy. You mm. say that world economy would be more better. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, we, we also worry about the tension, mm. uh, war tension, Pacific Ocean tension. Do yeah. you think it's a very important factor we have to consider? I think the, the, the concern, macro concern for Vietnam as a Vietnam business is more what will happen in Europe um, on the European economy. Does that economy recover or not? Because the America economy looks like it's on a good path of recovery. Mm -hmm. So Europe, does it have suffer another shock again? Mm -hmm. Or is it now able to start showing some areas of recovery? I mean, in Spain, you still have 25% unemployment. Mm -hmm. And until that situation starts, 25% is huge. Until you start seeing that situation start getting better, uh, Europe's going to continue to be challenged. Uh, I think in terms of the geopolitical, uh, you know, Pacific or um, s sort of sea tensions that are happening, I can't see them uh, creating real problems because I just see the country's interest mm -hmm. is not to have conflict, mm -hmm. and but to try and resolve these things over time um, in a manner that's acceptable to, to all parties. Mm -hmm. So I think it will take time. There may be some tension here and there, similar to this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. but I don't really see that as a major risk mm -hmm. uh, for, for our, our economy in Vietnam. Now we are uh, quite close to mm -hmm. the concept that, the, not concept, also the prospect of ASEAN 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, also TPP, even mm -hmm. uh, right now, TPP, we, we didn't know is it they can finalize in early 2014 or not. Mm -hmm. But do you think two factors, ASEAN 2015 and TPP, still be very uh, helpful for Vietnam economy? I think so. I mean, if you look at what happened with WTO, I think it was 1999 that Vietnam signed into WTO. That played a major role in opening up parts of the economy. Not straight away, but over four or five years, you saw real change come through. And I think the same will happen with ASEAN. For me, more than the TPP offers the biggest uh, step if Vietnam signs it, or if all the countries sign in first quarter in 2014, uh, which are hopefully by the time <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's already moving on. But, I th but it does represent a real opportunity, but it also represents a challenge. Because yes, suddenly, challenge. Yeah, so suddenly you'll be exposed to the world market of people being able to import and as well as export a lot easier in and out. So it's important that anyone producing products in Vietnam or services is able to compete against the other markets. What, what kind of key important challenge here? Is it the regulation? Mm. Our domestic regulation at the moment not yet changed enough to, be, to reach international standards? It could be a few things. It could be the access to good infrastructure, so making sure the ports are very efficient, the road system is strong to handle the movement of goods and services, uh, the telecommunications infrastructure. So I think that's important. And the other area that's very important, especially I think in this year ahead, is one is the fiscal spending by the government, making sure that they spend the budget in the right areas. Mm -hmm. And the other area, which is for me is very important for the SMEs really, is the ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. How easy is it to set up a company in Vietnam mm -hmm. as a foreigner or as a local? How easy is it to get a license? How transparent is the process through mm -hmm. customs, mm -hmm. etc.? So really making sure that we run like a machine, that we're very efficient. Mm -hmm. Because only then will we be able to compete against the other countries that are also part of the same trade agreements. Something look like the same unfinished agenda for years <laughs> since we talked about 10 years ago or 20 mm. years ago. Mm. Now no new target, correct? Mm. I think that the, that agenda of ease of doing business is mm. something that will be for the next 10 years easily. But that applies to many countries. Uh, you've seen some countries that really focus on it. They set up a task force and they work through what are the problems in, in each sector and they give uh, proposals to the government on how to fix it. Mm -hmm. Some countries, they take more general approach to trying mm -hmm. to fix it slowly. But I think it will be. I think it will be on our agenda for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I speak to some uh, investors, Vietnamese as well as foreign, mm -hmm. and they've seen real progress on the ease of licensing. So they were able to set up a factory in four months mm -hmm. uh, to produce textiles. And that's quite fast you know, for, for any country. So it depends on the sector. Yes, thank you, Mr. Tarek. I think uh, later on we will talk about the response of entrepreneur. I hope that you can give us the advice of how we do well in <laughs> 2014. Sure. Cảm ơn quý vị. Uh, chúng ta sẽ có cuộc trao đổi tiếp. Tôi nghĩ rằng là trong cái cuộc trao đổi tiếp thì chúng ta sẽ 
xem ông Thorax sẽ có những cái lời tư vấn như thế nào cho doanh nghiệp Việt Nam trong năm 2014.